Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Q Manufacturing. I am Matt, as always, and today we are going to do part two of our carbon fiber wind manufacture. Hopefully, it's going to be better than the last time. So, when we left off last time, we had this horrible, horrible thing. Like, the cutting didn't work out very well at all. So, I went back, I thought about it, I made some changes, and we ended up with a segment like this. We actually have more than this, don't worry, the wing has not moved down to that size. So, to fix this problem, I made two sets of templates. We now have one set of templates you can see here, which is the original. That's got the grooves in it uh, for the wing spars. And they've also been cleaned up together. They're a lot smoother now than they were previously. And then we have this set of templates here, which is just a plain wing profile that doesn't have anything that the wire will catch in or snag on and like generally cause the problems you saw before. So you can see, this is one of the uh, small pieces I've done. This has actually worked out really nicely. It's got a little wire mark there, but that's, that's nothing. Uh, and the same over this side, you've got a little couple of marks here where it's uh, just dragged for like half a second. But, you know, they're, they're visible but barely feelable, so they're good. And once the carbon goes on, they will disappear completely. So the workflow is very similar to last time. This time we use the wing blank templates attached to the foam and then hot wire cut that foam blank. From there we'd remove these two templates and then we'd attach these two templates. And then again we'd go back and we just hot wire cut these sections here where the wing spars go. In the end, we end up with something looking just like this, which is a wing segment, the same size and everything as that one right there, except it now has some spar locations in it. The spars are pretty rough. As I said, they catch a little bit and it's not as nice. Even though I cleaned them up, it still didn't work out too well. But they're better than they were previously. And because that's not an aerodynamic surface, we can put a bit of a filler in there to make it nice and smooth and structural. So that's two small sections. And then we also have this one big section. So I previously said the wing was going to be 700 mil long. This is only 600 mil wide. I didn't like lying to you guys, so I wanted to make it bigger, and I have. We're now going to go from a 600 mil wide section, and then we're going to add two 200 mil wide sections, like this on the ends, and we're going to make a one meter long wing. It's bigger than 700, it's a lie, but it's a lie in the right direction. So what I'm going to do now is finish off this last one here. So you can see here, I'm actually just lining up the template and the wing off um, the upper wing surface here. Uh, the holes don't quite line up just due to the way they were drilled. So I'm using this as a known reference point, located in the forward edge, upper surface, and now I know that that's in the right spot. From there, just push the screws in, and they'll self-tap their own holes because we're only drilling into polystyrene. Just want to be careful we don't go too hard, we don't want to strip the screws out. We want it to actually just hold in place, doesn't mean it's too strong, but it just needs to be strong enough. So as we move over to the wire cutter, I've made some changes here too. You can see that we've gone to a uh, what's that, squeeze clamp in the back there to provide tension. Instead of just doing that knot, it allows me to get a lot more tension in the wire so it doesn't bend as much. And then I've also put a spring in here so that we can get more of a constant tension on the wire. So I can put some tension on it and as the wire expands and contracts, it um, maintains as close to that tension as possible while still allowing a bit of movement in the wire. So now we have to cut this one segment here into three individual segments like this. So we can lay up our spars on these parts here and then bond the whole thing back together. So that's the one I've already done earlier, 200 mil one. The big one's done as well. And I'll show you now how we did the small one. So I've cut down and pre-drilled some uh, bamboo skewers. I'm just gonna use as, a, as a limit stops essentially for this. So what we do is we line them up with the front and the back of the spar location, as you can see here and then we just run some screws into it to hold it in place. Do that on both sides, and then we put it through the wire cutter, running the wire along the edge of this, um, this bamboo. So you can see now how if we run a wire across those two, we can just run straight down that line there, and we'll get a nice even cut, just like on this one here. Over to the hot wire cutter for hopefully the last time. So as you can see there, that's a nice straight cut running directly in between the two end stops. So what we have here is our nine pieces all lined up and all marked off and ready for bonding. We're going to bond this entire row together, this whole row together, and then this whole row together. So we have the full span of each element, the leading edge, the main section of the wing, and then the trailing edge of the wing. So we can then lay up our um, spars on the main section, 
and then we'll attach the two uh, leading edge and trailing edge sections to the main section and then wrap the whole thing in carbon. So what we're doing is just using a polystyrene safe adhesive. In this case, it's one, two, three fix from Sika. Um, it's polystyrene safe, but it's more of an industrial adhesive. I probably should have gone for like Gorilla Glue or something like that. But you know what? This is what we got. So we're just going to carefully place some on. I'm just going to So what I'm going to do is line up the top surface and then line up the front and rear edge of the spar. And then I've pre-toothpicked this one. So we'll just throw a toothpick through there and line it up that way. And get another one going through from this side. Now uh, put them in the diagonals, it stitches the whole thing together. And now we have one joined piece of wing. So the three major elements now are all bonded together. I'm going to let that set up overnight and I'll come back tomorrow and we can start work on the main section. See you then. Time to tap some holes. I don't have a bench mount advice. I don't even have an actual workbench. This is just an office table that I picked up on the cheap. So, um, you know, I say adapt and overcome. After drilling and tapping, the aluminium blocks got a solvent clean. Um, just washed them in acetone, gave them a quick rough up with some sandpaper. And now we're just going to block off this hole here so it doesn't get any resin in it during the actual bonding. So to do that, we're just using some clim wrap, glad wrap, cling film, whatever you want to call it. We're turning it into a tight cylinder. Popping bubbles is so satisfactory. And then we're just going to kind of wind it through the hole. It's going to chip off the end. And we're just going to slice that glad wrap off. To leave a nice flush surface. It's uh, blocked up and that'll prevent any of the resin getting inside the hole. Back to our wing, we're just dealing with the main section at the moment. You can see the trailing edge and the leading edge up here. Everything's all being glued together. It's quite strong and quite stiff, so that's good. I've given the whole thing a sand down and I've rolled over these edges um, just to make it so the carbon will drape more easily across it without causing problems. Now what we have to do is locate the aluminium blocks over there in their respective locations in the spar. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the center line of the wing. So as we said, these ends here aren't the best. So we're going to chop them off. So we're going to find the dead center of the wing. Um, we're then going to move out 250 mil either side. So we have a 500 mil spacing. So it should put it roughly here and here. And we'll put one block here, one block there. There, there. And we'll just adhere them in and then let them, go, let them set up overnight. So the four aluminium pieces have now been done. Most of them have been labeled apart from number four. Um, we're going to use the same adhesive as last time. Just that one, two, three fix because it seemed to work pretty well. And apparently it bonds. Uh, polystyrene and anodized aluminium together. So we're just going to use that, put a little bit on there. Uh, these ones here are really tight fit. Number two is a little loose, number three, number one is really good. So we're just going to use a bit of a off cut, you can see up here, just as shimming number two in place. The rest of them will be just held in place by their own pressure and the tightness in the foam. So now it's time to do the final shaping of these spar locations. We're just going to use some dry micro to fill in these gaps here so that we have a nice, smooth, continuous surface for the spars to go over. So I'm still using my Kinetics R246 resin here with a super slow hardening. I use about a 10 hour cure time. It is a 4 to 1 mix ratio. So we're looking for a total of 30 grams. Just 
Time to mix. And that's what we're going to use. Quite extra dry. It's like a really, really stiff cake frosting or something. It's definitely a putty. It's not a liquid. Okay, now we've got the bulk of the shaping done. It's time for the messy part. We're just going to use some peel ply, we're going to place it over each of the joints, and then we're going to pat it down by hand. The reason we're doing it is so as you peel the peel ply off, it leaves a freshly broken resin surface behind, which means you don't have to sand. I don't like sanding, I don't think you guys do either, so that's the reason we're going to do it. The peel ply also allows us to shape it. So we're just going to use peel ply like that, push it down, kind of smooth it out to become the final shape that we want it to be. So we're just going to prepack the fabric for our spa, then lay it on. It's going to loosely spread out some resin along this this strip. The first couple will be a little resin rich and then we'll squeeze that resin out as we go. And by a little resin rich, I mean really resin rich. Ladies and gents, it's been a couple of days and you've seen me lay the spars up on the front and rear 
but I didn't really speak too much during that, so I feel like I owe you a bit of an explanation as to what I did. So you saw me over this side of the table here, I pre-pregged the fiberglass and the carbon fiber layup. There was actually a layer of fiberglass in there in some spots, that was just to insulate the, uh, the blocks that the screw holes are in that support the, the spars. Uh, from there I laid it up over the spars and that's when things started to get a bit busy and I didn't really talk too much. The layup didn't really conform as well as I wanted to uh, over the spar. I expected it to drape a lot better, um, possibly because I'm just expecting it to have bigger radiuses and would drape without any assistance. So um, I had to massage it in a whole heap and then I thought that I'd be going and putting it in a vacuum bag but realised that the whole point of this was we're meant to be doing this activity with no tools, no vacuum bags, nothing special. So instead I uh, just used a bit of peel ply on the top of it, here, a bit of peel ply on the top of it you can see over here and then um, just some builder's plastic because as you can see here nothing sticks to the builder's plastic and then taped it down the, each end just to kind of draw some tension into it to put a bit of tension on it. So it's like a $2 solution instead of using a vacuum bag. Obviously it doesn't pull out any extra resin or air bubbles but as you can see here it conforms the spar quite nicely around to the structure. If we play a game from our childhood and spot the difference here, you'll notice that this end of the carbon is a bit different from this end down here. This is uh, much more flush to the surface and then this one here is a lot over, got a lot more overhang on it. So I chopped this with a pair of scissors, whereas this one here I came back in during the cure. I left it a little bit too late, but it's also the first time I ever tried this, so my bad, sue me. And I um, cut it with a, a Stanley knife or a box cutter, just one of these blades here. I probably should have used a, a stronger one. But all you do is you take your, your cutter and you just cut around the edge there when it's wet. Not when it's wet, when it's still curing. Yes. So you just take your box cutter and you just cut around the edge there when it's not fully cured yet. So it's kind of pliable, almost like chewing gum. I cut this one a little bit too late into the cure and it was actually quite difficult. Um, I'm going to try it again in the future because it's going to be much easier to clean that edge up and the other edge than it is to clean these ones here. I also had a crack, you can see here, you might be able to see if I just indicate using the knife. You might be able to see here this line. I had a go at um, slicing off the excess along the edge here using that same method. But again, it was a bit too cured and it just didn't work too well. So I think if I had have got to about an hour earlier, this is a 10 hour cure resin. If I had have got to about an hour earlier, it would have been fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, and we're back and the spars are now cut down to size. You can see them trimmed quite nicely. However, there's been a bit of an issue. Uh, I've cut a bit too deeply in some spots here. It's not the whole way through. It's not ideal. It's because I rushed it. It's not going to cause a problem. As I said in the first video, this foam here is sacrificial. Uh, but it's just not the way you want it to be. I could have cut through the whole way by accident and that would have really you know, ruined my day. So what we're going to do here, I'm just going to sand up the end of the spars now. We'll finish the spars, cover off a brief lessons learned, and then we'll move on for the next video. One thing I've had to do that wasn't really expected was actually just square up the ends. Um, so all I've done to do that is just use a square, run it both along there, because it's not a perfectly smooth surface here, so just run it along there in that direction, also in that direction there, and look, they're close enough for what we're doing, uh, because they'll then be adjusted with the next segment that goes on, and also with the front. So those ends are done. So ladies and gents, I like sanding complete, and I do love sanding. We have come to the conclusion of episode two of our wing build. So just to sum up what we've done so far, we've redone the foam mandrel for the layup, um, cut it out quite nicely at work this time, fantastic. We've then laid up these two spars, the front and rear spars, uh, on top of the foam. Then we've sanded it down just to kind of fare it in here, um, so it's a reasonably nice looking and uh, smooth surface for our next stages. I'm not going to tell you what they are, because that would ruin the surprise. So on to our lessons learned, it's what we do at the end of each of these episodes. I have two to three, now you pack, unpack them, uh, lessons learned for this particular task. So the first one is uh, this stuff you can just see here. This is the remnants of the glue that I used. It's a uh, Sika, you know, Sika one, two, three, fix it. Um, it works really well. It actually bonds the uh, foam in fantastically. The only problem is it's got about 12 hour cure time. So that delayed my uh, layoffs a bit. I only, only can work on weekends. Um, you may have noticed the video has been a while since the last one. So having to you know, take 12 hours in between each lot of bonding in order to let it cure and stuff kind of just ruins my flow. I should have used hot glue. It would have been done in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and we'd be happy. Um, moving on to point number two is uh, this big cut here. 
So the big cut here was caused by the um, oscillatory tool, which I like because they don't leave much dust. They leave a lot of dust, but it doesn't go flying everywhere like a rotary tool. Um, but it's cut a long way into the foam here. What I should have done, and I spoke about having a go at it, was actually just get a sharp knife and cut it along the edge before epoxy had fully cured. Particularly because it wasn't in a vacuum bag, it was a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, that's my, my bad. Uh, it worked really well when I did it for the little sections that I did, so that was brilliant. Um, but I'm going to try and incorporate that from now on into my builds. Because, you know what, why use a power tool with all the noise and all the dust and all that risk when you can just get a knife and just cut straight down the edge. That sounds great to me. All right, and lesson three also has to do with spars. Funnily enough, this whole episode was about spars. I wasn't really a fan of um, how I put these spars on. I should have practiced that a few times first, so that's kind of an unpackable, we'll call it 3.1 as a point. Uh, but the big concern was how thick I put on in one go. So because I put almost three millimetres, turn this sideways here, you can see, you know, those spars are quite thick there. I put almost three millimetres of spar on this in one go and then tried to bend it around quite a small radius and, you know, all that kind of jazz. It ended up with a lot of slack and it wasn't really a precise layup and it was just, you know, untidy. So what I feel I should have done was actually do it in two different layups. Um, I should have, you know, done it at one and a mil or one and a half mil, you know, so what's that, four layers worth of fabric first. Um, laid that up, got it all nice and neat and then done another layup over the top of that. Um, I think that would have been a better option, but I didn't think about it at the time. So we'll call that a lesson learned uh, and I'll try and incorporate it next time. All right, guys, last point. Uh, no one got back to me on YouTube about actually wanting this wing, and I was telling a friend of that, and he said, hey, I have a new car I'm building. I'd happily take it. So this wing needs to get a bit longer. It's going to have about another 200 mil added to each end of it, just in extensions. They don't need a spar. They'll just be skinned, and it'll be fine. Uh, and the wing now has a home. So that's going to be excellent. It's actually going to see some use in a racetrack, which makes me really happy. I don't like building things for the sake of building them. So, guys, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed and you like my stuff, please consider doing so. I'm not going to ask you in the middle of the video. That's just rude. Um, but yeah, cheers guys, have a good one.